Qtile has long been one of my favorite tiling window managers. I've been using Qtile on and off probably for 10 years or so. I've been a long time Qtile fan. And one of the things is over the years, each time I go and play around in Qtile, live in it for a while, configure it, I always discover new things. And today I wanted to make a quick video demonstrating some really cool built-in features to Qtile that most people probably don't know exist. One of the things though, Qtile has a fantastic website with fantastic documentation. And when you go and read their documentation, your mind will be blown by some of the stuff that is available for you in Qtile if you want it. The first feature I want to talk about is actually one of the built-in layouts that's available for you within Qtile. If you go to their documentation, these are probably about 15 layouts that you could enable within Qtile. And one of the really cool ones and very unique is the tree tab layout. And what the tree tab layout does, it basically has like a little side panel on one side of the screen that actually lists all your windows in a tree view. And you can organize them into groups and you can have the windows uh, kind of stacked on each on top of each other in a particular order and you can have them indented depending on I guess the importance of a particular test it's, it's kind of unusual and let me show you this in action so I'm going to open four terminal windows right now I'm in the monad tall layout which is the master and stack layout but let me cycle through my layouts until I get to tree tab so this is the tree tab layout. So I've got those four windows open and I've created three groups by default in my tree tab layout and I've got them named. I simply named them one, two, and three, but you could actually name the groups uh, more descriptive names depending on uh, like workspace names or you know the types of applications that are available within each of the tree tab groups. Essentially though, it's a max layout, right? We've got the windows, max for the most part on top of each other in a stack the only difference is i've got the the sidebar here that's actually got the the tree view but if you do a, a super j or super k to cycle back and forth through the stack you know you can go through the stack as you would in the max layout but if i do super shift j or super shift k i can actually move the windows through the groups so i if i do super shift j I just moved this first terminal window that has focus down to workspace or the group two here inside the tree tab view. And let's change the title of this by actually running a program so it's titled HTOP, right? So Super Shift J, I can move it to group three. Super Shift K, I can move it back up to two. Super Shift K, I can move it back uh, to workspace one here. Now what's really interesting, watch what happens when I do Super Shift L for right, right? We're doing the Vim navigation keys, L is right, so Super Shift L. And you can see the window indented over a spot, right? Well, you can say it's, I guess, less important than the window above it, or maybe it's part of a uh, order of tasks that I maybe I need to do this window before I do this window. By the way, I could click on this window with the mouse instead of cycling with Super J and K. But let's indent this one. Let me do Super Shift L on that one. And you can see I indented that one over. And because that one, the H top window was below it and was already indented over, it indented over a second time. And, you know, that's just kind of neat the way you can order these things. If I super shift L, move that over. Now they're all indented one, two, three, four spots finally for the H top window. But what happens if I do super shift H to move that back? I can super shift H again. I could even you know, move it all the way over. So this, I guess, is not part of this kind of grouping. You, you can think of it that way, but you can order them in whatever method you want. But what's really cool, let's go back to this very first terminal window. What happens if I do super shift J to move that to the next group. It moves that window and all the windows that were indented over as part of its tree, its own group, right? So that is just really, really neat. I, I don't know if I would ever personally live in tree tab and use it all the time, but I think it's such an interesting kind of layout. I think some people for some use cases will really enjoy the tree tab layout. Now let me pull up my Qtile config so we can actually see uh, some of the code associated with that 
tree tab layout. So I'm going to scroll down through my config until I get to the layout section here. And you can see I've got this layouts section here and you can see I've got all of the built-in layouts that are available. I've got it here but most of them are commented out like I'm not going to use the BSP layout, the ratio tile layout, the vertical layout. So I've got a lot of those uh, commented out but the ones that I do use monad tall max stack columns and then tree tab and you know I've got all of these uncommented and you can see there are the options that are available for you to play with for tree tab so you got a lot of coloring options depending on active window inactive window you can name the sections you can see I just named my sections one two three you can have as many or as few sections as you want and finally, the, the big thing is how wide is the panel? You see panel underscore width. That is the setting for that. Now, one feature that probably most Qtile users do know is available, because if you've ever used the default standard config for Qtile, you know that Super R brings you up a run prompt. You can see I've got this little run prompt here, spawn, colon, and then we've got a blinking cursor, right? It's essentially, I think it's a wrapper around D-Menu, which honestly, D-Menu, the proper D-Menu program, it's just a better program, so I, I always default to D-Menu. I imagine most Qtile users probably do use either D-Menu or Rofi for their run launcher rather than the built-in uh, prompt there with Super R. That said, using their built-in D-Menu wrapper, this, the little run prompt here, does have some advantages. One of the advantages is with TreeTab, and because TreeTab has these sections, right? Well, what if you want to dynamically add sections or, or delete sections to the tree tab layout. Well, you can actually do that. There are commands available for you to do that. You could actually set them to key bindings, but really what you probably want to do is you want to create a new function here in Python. And this simple little function, I, I grabbed this off of the internet because I saw someone else uh, using something similar. But basically, we're going to have this new function, add tree tab section. And then once we have that created, we're actually just going to keybind that function. So if I scroll down here, I've got uh, this here. Mod Shift A, so Super Shift A for add tree tab section, prompt to add new section in tree tab. And you see it's a prompt. So I'm gonna get a prompt similar to this run prompt, right? Except this prompt will be prompting me to add a new section to tree tab. So let's see this in action. So let me, once again, I'll open a few windows and let me cycle back over to tree tab and now I have one two and three for the group names for the tree tab but what if I do super shift a now I get a prompt it says section name and I could add four all caps and now I have a new section here that you know you could just randomly on the fly anytime you need a new section in your tree tab add that Kind of a cool feature. Uh, it's really kind of a, a neat thing that that built-in prompt for Qtile does integrate really well with some of these custom Python functions that you may end up creating along the way. And if you dive a little deeper into the Qtile documentation, you'll actually find that Qtile, they've got a ton of built-in extensions, and specifically they have a, a lot of built-in extensions that are designed around D menu because so many tiling window manager users and Qtile users in particular here, they, they use D menu. So it makes sense that they've built kind of these extension programs built around D menu. And one of the cool things is this built in extension called command set. It basically allows you to define almost like you're defining a key binding in your your standard key bindings in your config, right? Except this particular key binding using this command set extension basically allows you to quickly create a D menu script. So let me show you this because I actually copied the example that they were using here. And I gave it this particular key binding here, super Z. And then one of the things you define is commands equals and then the braces. Inside the braces, you give it a list of options. These are the options that are D menu options. It's this the options that D menu will show. So if I do super Z, you can see, play, pause, next, previous, quit, open, shuffle, repeat. Let me escape out of that. Play, pause, next, previous, quit, open, shuffle, repeat. You give it a name, right? So that's the listing. And then 
colon, and then you give it the command that should execute if you enter on that. Now for me, I do have MOCP, that's a, a music on console, a music player. I do have that installed on my system. I'm actually not going to play any music on this video. URXVT, I don't have that particular terminal open, but you know what I could do really quick just to show you this in action. Instead of executing anything with MOCP, I can just have it open the Alacrity terminal. Let's open HTOP within Alacrity. So I'm just going to change that. Let's restart Qtile. And now I'm going to do Super Z. And if I go to the open option, if I hit enter, it should open HTOP and Alacrity. And that's exactly what happens. So that is a really quick and easy way to get a D menu script instead of having to actually write a bash script doing everything with D menu they've really streamlined the process now if you were doing something really complicated with D menu where you had to string a whole bunch of things in succession like you choose an option in a menu and then you get another D menu that you choose another option and you know if you're doing something really complicated you probably should do that as a separate bash script but for something really simple like this is an example of just a a media player right play pause quit open shuffle repeat that makes sense and i could see people using this for even like a logout menu so you have you know logout reboot shutdown whatever so some really neat stuff there those features with the the d menu extensions the tree tab layout and again if you want to really have your mind blown, man, just go read the, the Qtile documentation. You'll find all kinds of things that these guys have already set up, right? They've already got extensions for. You'd be amazed. I've been back living in Qtile for a few weeks now. I, I've been daily driving Qtile on my main production workstation here at the office, as well as my home computer. And I've got to say, it, it's always been one of my favorite window managers and it still remains that way every time i revisit it I, I, i'm just so impressed with what the developers behind qtile have accomplished now before i go i need to thank a few special people i need to thank the producers of this episode daniel gabe james matt paul royal west armor dragon commander angry george lee methos nader yon paul peace auction fedora realities for less red profit roland soul astry tools devler war gentoo and ubuntu and willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on patreon without these guys this quick little episode about really neat features available in qtile it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about free and open source software like Qtile, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.